The smart home industry is a train wreck. It's a complete state, and there's a good reason. It's always the same. Every single manufacturer that came into the smart home industry went, we need to just achieve one thing taking every little piece of our clients' money humanly possible. And because that was their goal, everything is a mess. There are different protocols, different standards, different things that will work with some things but won't work with other things. And I got to thinking, if my best friend came to me today and said, Paul, I've got Amazon Alexa, or Paul, I've got Google Home, or Paul, I've got Apple HomeKit, what should I do to get a smart home all set up and consolidated and working for me? I wasn't sure what I would answer with. And so I thought, there's a video. Let's let's do that. A lot of the smart home gear out there is ludicrously expensive, and so I thought it was worthwhile just going through some of the things that are actually worth spending your money on, and some of the things that aren't. And uh, you know, times are tough for everybody. Even I've had to star in the team new version of Jurassic Park to make ends meet. <laughs> They don't move in herds. So I'm going to answer that exact question. I'm going to tell you the exact smart home I ended up with, what I would have done differently along the way, and what you should do starting again from scratch right now, so that you'll have an easier ride than I did, and I just kind of figured it all really starts with a smart home hub. Which, which smart home hub should you buy? So we'll start where everybody starts when they want to start using their gob hole to do things. And that is your smart home speaker. It has a little microphone in it so you can tell it to turn that light on. And which one should you get really depends on which ecosystem you are most invested in already. If you're already into Apple, get the Apple HomePod Mini. It is absolutely awesome. I can barely find fault with it. It is great for setting up routines so you can do things like when your iPhone enters your house, automatically turn the lights on, that sort of thing. Don't even need a smart home hub. The Amazon Echo is second best when it comes to routines. It can do almost all of the things this can do, but it has way, way more. Compatibility. There is way more compatibility with the Amazon Echo and other smart home devices. This thing, Apple are a little bit low on the ground when it comes to what it will work with. This works with literally every smart home device on the planet. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't spoken yet about Google, and that's because you should just put it in a bin. Where Google, Google just pop us in a bin. They just, the, the routines don't work properly. There is barely a routine that you can set up that will actually be of any value. All you can really do is use your voice to turn your lights on and off, or that's pretty much it. Put it in a bin, put it in a bin, put it in a bin. <laughs> There is one other advantage to the Apple HomeKit ecosystem over the Amazon Alexa ecosystem, and that is that the Apple HomePod Mini and the Apple HomePod will work without an internet connection to control your lights, and it will still listen to things like contact sensors opening as you walk into a door to make things happen. That's not true of Amazon Alexa. It is all currently at time of filming reliant entirely on you having a stable internet connection, and it's all entirely reliant on Amazon's servers. It almost made me move. I, I, I've strongly considered moving to Apple HomeKit for that exact reason, but you're going to have to switch your entire ecosystem. You need an iPhone. Ridiculous. I don't have an iPhone. I want an iPhone about as much as I want the Team U version of Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. I will give you legs of regret. Silly little legs of regret. You will walk, but won't have a voice. Till a man kisses you in the mouth Ooh, 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 mouth So 
So just to recap, go buy yourself an Amazon Alexa speaker if you want the most compatibility with the most things and a really easy ride of setting up things like routines so that when you walk in your front door, the lights come on. Get the Apple HomePod Mini if you're already into the Apple ecosystem because you can do all sorts of cool stuff using your iPhone as a trigger for making things happen. And put Google Home in a bin because it sucks big old donkey balls. That sucks big old donkey balls. So that's it. You now have a microphone to use so that you can speak through the internet to some giant ugly corporate entity who then speak to another corporate entity to send a signal down through the internet back through your router to your light bulb to turn your light bulb on. Awesome. But that happens in a split second though, right? So it goes across the internet, comes back to your house, the light comes on, you wouldn't even know it happened. So why bother with a smart home hub? Smart home hubs aren't really about using your voice. Smart home hubs are about if a contact sensor opens, turn a light on. If presence is detected in a room, turn a light on. If I go and sit on the sofa, automatically start an episode of Star Trek. These are things that I can achieve without having to use the internet at all, and that's important. People don't like to use the internet if they are into smart homes because you can't trust the internet to always be up, you can't trust the corporate entity that you bought the thing from to not eventually go bust and then everything fall to pieces and no longer work, and people don't like the idea of a gigantic corporate entity watching every single little thing that they do. I'm hiding in the bushes and watching your kid just telling Jeff Bezos what they did. He's floating in space, wants to know what they do, because Alexa is watching you poo. Because they are. Alexa is watching you poo. It is. <laughs> now, a word from our sponsor, Roborock. Reginald, would the little lady in your life like a new vacuum cleaner? Well, that's sexist, you misogynistic little hedge weasel! The modern man shares the burden of domestic hygiene! The new F25 range of wet and dry vacuum cleaners have dual tank technology, one for clean water and another for filth! Not that kind of filth, Reginald, you sausage brain cretinous little boob! <laughs> filth! This modern miracle of innovation auto cleans itself, self dries, and uses smart sensors to detect filth levels to automatically increase power where required. Which is fortunate because Reginald's abode is a catastrophic cesspit of unimaginable horror. Disgusting. Amber Hood. Grumpy. My dog stepped on a bee. With 20,000 pascals of raw suction power and patented slide deck power steering, you'll soon be reminded that domestic hygiene is a testosterone fueled gentleman's dream. Here at the Faculty for Advanced Research and Thought. What are you laughing at, Reginald? There's nothing funny about the F-A-R-T! Right! Boob! Here at the Faculty for Advanced Research and Thought, we found that both the wet vac and the dry vac could get into the tiniest of crannies. of the Roborock F25 range now by clicking the link in the description. And now, back to our main feature! A smart home hub plugs into your router and so can connect to the internet and can react to Amazon Alexa, so you can still have Amazon Alexa turn a light on for you using your face hole. But the thing sits there on your network locally, which means that even if your internet connection goes down, things that are directly connected to the smart home hub will still be able to function. 
So to recap, you can create automations using the Amazon Alexa ecosystem, and you don't necessarily even need a smart home hub. But if you value things like your privacy and you're interested in having everything work without an internet connection, then you will need a smart home hub to do that. If you're an Apple HomeKit user, you can probably do all of your automations locally without worrying about the internet connection, and Apple is pretty private, but not every smart home device on the market will work directly with Apple HomeKit and might require a smart home hub anyway to act as an intermediary. Smart home hubs are almost always entirely local, will give you more advanced automations than anything Amazon Alexa or Apple HomeKit could offer, and of course act as a hub for all of the devices made by that manufacturer and sometimes other manufacturers too. And therein lies the problem. Proprietary. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. Just spent an hour of my life making that. But I did the impression and everything. Just really like Optimus Prime. Complete moron. Anyway, not every smart home hub works with every smart home device. If you buy a SwitchBot hub, it will primarily only work with SwitchBot devices. If you buy an Acara hub, it will primarily only work with Acara devices. What you can't do is take SwitchBot devices and connect them to an Acara hub. Why? Corporate greed, Mr. Bezos! Corporate greed! Yeah. It's not just corporate greed. In some cases, in Akara's case and SwitchBot's case, it's actually primarily to do with programming. Both of them are now striving to try and use the Matter Alliance to get all of their stuff working in each other's ecosystems, but we're not quite there yet. So which hub should you buy? Now there are two notable smart home hubs on the market that I have featured on this channel before that aim to pull everything under one roof, no matter who the manufacturer is. They are Homey and Hubitat. Both of them are absolutely awesome, but I don't think they're beginner's devices still. Homey, maybe you might get away with it. Hubitat, not so much. It's a little bit more complex, and I think it's something you graduate to later on. Homey is probably the better of the two candidates for making it easy, but it is more expensive. It's actually one of the most expensive hubs on the market. If you're technically competent, going the Homey route is probably a really good way of doing it. But there is also the full DIY solution of Home Assistant, which we'll talk about in a minute. So if you're a beginner and you're really just starting out, what do I recommend? The answer is the same as it always has been. I have recommended this to you so many times over the years. The answer is buy Akara stuff first. If you buy an Akara hub, for one thing, they build them into cameras, which means that you're getting a double whammy. You get a security camera and a smart home hub. If you then buy things like their sensors, um, they do presence sensors, they do door sensors, they do motion sensors in battery form that you can stick in your bathroom. They do so many different devices and they all work through their smart home hub to both Apple HomeKit and Amazon Alexa. So if you bought an Acara camera, you can load it up on your Amazon Echo Show. If you buy an Acara contact sensor, then you can actually use that Acara contact sensor in an Amazon Echo routine so that when the contact sensor is opened, you can make a thing happen. The bloody door is open. <laughs> There's a wanker in the dining room. Get down there and stove his head in. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an old one. That's an old joke. A lot of these are old jokes. I, I reuse everything I do all the time. Too many cutaway jokes! But more than that, it also works with Apple HomeKit. So if one day you decide you've had enough of Jeff Bezos' bullshit, you can immediately just switch it all over to Apple HomeKit in a heartbeat. You will, as I said before, need an iPhone to do so. But, you know, it's actually one of the best smart home ecosystems out there. But even better than that, if you decide one day you've had enough of everybody's bullshit, you can move away from those smart home systems to your own personalized system that you created yourself on either a Raspberry Pi or a mini PC in the form of what we call Home Assistant. Home Assistant is the best smart home platform on the market and almost everything from Acara works directly on that too, which means that even if you start out simple and you want to build your way up to something very, very complicated, Acara is the best starting point. And that's why I recommend their hub and their equipment first. SwitchBot is a close second, and I have 
a SwitchBot hub on my desk and an Akara hub in my house. And what I do is I switch between the two to do different things. SwitchBot makes some absolutely incredible products. My door, my door lock is controlled by a SwitchBot motor. That thing connects to my SwitchBot hub and that SwitchBot hub itself, again, like Akara use their camera to also act as a hub, They've created like a dial thing that I can use to control my TV and send infrared signals to my aircon. Do all sorts of stuff with the hub itself and connect SwitchBot products to it and therefore to Amazon Alexa. And more recently, Apple HomeKit 2 and Govi stuff. I have Govi lights all over this place because they are the prettiest smart home lights in the industry. They don't even need a hub, so there is no hub. They work over Wi-Fi, so they connect through your router and then to Amazon Alexa, or in fact, with their Matter-enabled lights to Apple HomeKit 2. And this brings us on to one final complexity. If something is matter enabled, it should be able to communicate directly with Apple HomeKit and Amazon Alexa and basically any smart home hub that supports matter. If you buy a product that isn't matter enabled and it's Wi-Fi, it won't work with Apple HomeKit. Apple HomeKit needs some sort of way of authorizing the product onto their platform and they currently use matter and pretty much nothing else. You can connect thread enabled devices directly to Apple HomeKit. So if you see thread stamped on a box or matter stamped on a box, you're safe. That'll work with everything. If it doesn't have thread or matter stamped on the box, you need to do a little bit of research before you buy it just to make sure it works with whatever it is you're using, whether that's Amazon Alexa, whether it's Apple HomeKit, or whether it's a smart home hub, you just need to make sure that that product works with that thing. If it says matter or thread, it almost definitely does. Again, probably Google just to make sure. Philips Hue got in touch. They offered to sponsor a video and uh, I wanted you guys to, to know that I turned them away. I actually didn't even reply. I don't think it's worth speaking to them. Um, when I first started this, I had this big idea that I was gonna turn this into a career. And the first thing I did was start slagging off the biggest smart home manufacturer in the industry because I genuinely think their stuff is garbage. How many kidneys have you got? Because Philips Hue want all of your kidneys. Don't buy anything from Philips Hue, don't buy anything from Lifix. Lifex. Don't buy Philips Hue, don't buy Lifex. I've said it so many times over the years, they are just the worst, and I thought it was quite poignant that I turned Hue down for sponsorship, considering they are the biggest player in the industry and probably have the deepest pockets. Anyone that thinks I'm a shill should probably keep that in mind next time you go, yeah, poor hip, it's a shill. I'm not a shill. <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't put a what's wrong with it section at the end of every video, and I wouldn't still be recommending the exact same people in non-sponsored videos. This isn't sponsored by Akara, it's not sponsored by SwitchBots, it's not sponsored by Govi, it's not sponsored by any of the companies that I'm recommending to you today. I do have to say thank you, however, to Roborock, the guys that sponsored today's video, um, because without that, I wouldn't be able to do it, and also without these people either. Um, I'm about to change my shirt because I'm... I'm yeah, these things aren't filmed in sequence. <laughs> um, <laughs> random ending to the video. I just thought that that was an important message to say. And if you're interested in watching um, any of my thoughts on Home Assistant, there is a video right here that you can go and watch, which will tell you all about how to get it set up on a mini PC, which in my opinion is the way to do it right now. Um, again, it's a little bit more advanced. And if you're not ready for that, buy a car stuff to start off with. Look at SwitchBot stuff as well, look at matter-enabled products, and eventually when you're feeling comfortable enough, go and watch that video and I'll walk you through how to set up Home Assistant so that everything is in your control and local to your network as much as humanly possible. With that said, a huge thank you again to Roborock and most importantly, my patrons for making this video a possibility. Without you guys, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. I'd be doing something else. Community is, is a huge thing to me. I, I, I perhaps don't make that a big enough deal in every video because I'm usually doing the whole like, oh, look at me, I'm wacky and funny thing. Um, but this is huge. If you want to be a patron, you want to help support this channel, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And I'm trying to thank a, at least one patron every week. And this week, I'm going to thank three brand new ones. So again, I'm so humbled by this. Josh Ford, Jeff Tiffin, and Bill Faulkner. Thank you guys so much. If you want to be like those guys or like those guys, as I say, you can do that at PayPal or Patreon. And if you want to hang out at the social medias, you can do that at either Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, 
X, the social medias. See you next time.